Episode 59. Where did it go? Do you know why the TSA likes to hire dentists? Because they're great at cavity searches. Hello, welcome to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki G. I'm here to inform, entertain, and delight your ear holes with all things off-road for the next 10 minutes or so. Why 10 minutes? That's about how long it's going to take for the hot water to uh, reheat. All right, I'd like to remind everybody you can listen to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast on whatever the hell you're listening to it on it now. And that being Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Breaker, CastBox, Pocket Cast, Stop Me When You Heard Some of These, Radio Public, and Stitcher. But never on Pandora or iHeartRadio. I don't know why they won't, won't return my calls. You can contact 10 Minute Off Road Podcast at 10 Minute Off Road Podcast at gmail.com. That's 10 Minute Off Road at gmail.com. Or you can leave a comment on, on one of our many social media platforms that we don't monitor. And come to think of it, I, don't, I haven't even checked the email in a long time. I probably got a ton of messages. And, but, you know, I don't do this to listen to you guys. I do this so you have to listen to me. Unless, of course, you're clicking the stop button right now, then I, I've failed miserably. But if you're not, then mission accomplished. That being said, you can follow the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast on all the social media platforms, such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And there's really nothing else. Because, uh, you know, let's face it, Snapchat is dead. And uh, I do not care for TikTok. I almost got a TikTok account, but I quickly gained my senses. I do not like TikTok. It's only good for looking at videos of dogs talking and girls twerking. All right, so moving right along, I want to talk about a lot of stuff. First of all, this is the second time I'm recording this episode. Uh, I've recorded an episode and it disappeared. I don't know where it is. It's not on my computer. It's not in the damn cloud. Uh, I don't know. Somewhere out there somewhere is somebody enjoying the raw audio footage of this podcast so I'm re-recording it and when I went to look at my notes <laughs> my notes were horrible I, 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 I took like no notes and it's written in a language that even I can't understand so uh, I just gotta wing it I, I think I know a little bit about what, what would happen uh, first off I want to talk about my YouTube problems <laughs> I have been getting YouTube copyright strikes Oh my gosh, it's it's been horrible. Uh, apparently, I used some video. When I put this episode on YouTube, I like to have uh, wheeling videos with it. And I don't go wheeling as much as I like, so I don't really have that much wheeling footage. So I've been borrowing other people's. And there's a few creators out there that compile footage from other people and post it. And so I kind of took it from them. I figured... They can't complain about people stealing their footage when they're stealing it from other people. But yeah, I got a copyright strike. So I will say, put it mildly, I've got quite... I'm in trouble, deep trouble. But anyhow, I think I'll recover from it as long as I behave from here on out. Who would have thunk it? But anyhow, I got some copyright strikes on me. I've learned my lesson. Now you got to look at boring videos of my chickens while you're listening to this. So let's put a nice segue into that. Did somebody mention you worry? Yeah, so uh, I was out of you worry last week. I had plans to spend the day with my wife. It fell through. She decided to go on a trip with some friends. And so I had the day to myself. I figured I'm going to drive up to you worry, just mill around. Uh, I didn't really run into anybody. So I didn't really run into anybody at you worry that I knew. But uh, I just drove around. I went to uh, one of the harder obstacles, and there was somebody broke down on it. I watched them for a while. There was, they had the situation under control, so I really couldn't offer any help. And then I just found a nice campsite. I just set up my hammock and took a nap, and it was really enjoyable. And I got to say, I, I took my onion bag out, and I started to pick up trash. And for the first time ever, I picked up very little trash. People are leaving the the campsite's clean-ish. You know, there's still trash, but not as not as much as I've seen in the years past. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Your your efforts have not gone unnoticed. 
And while I was out at Uori, uh, my check engine light came on. So while I was out at Uori, my Jeep ran beautiful, perfect. Uh, my heating issue is, uh, I think, solved. I didn't have to run my heat at all. I did run a little, little warm and sometimes, but uh, the auxiliary fan on a put on a on-demand switch seems to do the trick. Whenever the temperature rises up, I just run that fan full time, brings the temperature down. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way the Jeep is running. Very happy with my uh, Nexen Rodian MTs and counteract balancing beads they're they're doing a fine job we'll we'll see how long they last but so far so good no complaints yet but while i was out at uori my check engine light came on and it was a code 1493 which was battery temperature sensor who knew that there was a battery temperature sensor on a cherokee i kind of recall seeing something plugged into the bottom of my uh battery tray but didn't really think it did anything but sure enough it threw a code and researching it and I don't know if it's true on all vehicles but on my XJ it puts out 14 and a half volts to charge the battery and when the uh, battery temperature sensor detects a high temperature in the battery it chokes the voltage down so it's not overcharging your battery or heating your battery up too much so uh, I imagine with the check engine light I was getting less voltage to my battery although I couldn't see it on my gauge but then again that little gauge on the dashboard is not but then again that little gauge on a dashboard is not 100% accurate it's more of a good guideline so taking it drove it home let it set for a couple of days finally got the time to tear into it took out the battery took out the battery tray to remove the sensor and lo and behold there's a bare wire so the sensor was grounding out on the body Took the sensor out, wrapped it with electrical tape. I put an ohm meter on it and then heated up the uh, sensor with a heat gun to see if the ohms change. It did. Popped it back in. No more check engine light. Cheap, easy, free fix. I love it. So that brings me to the very short topic, because I'm running out of time, of what I carry with my Jeep. I'm ca I carry all kinds of stuff. And now I'm going to make sure a code reader is on that list because the check engine light went off. And I just happened to have a code reader with me, and I saw what the code was, and so I drove home without hesitation. If I didn't have a reader with me, I wouldn't know what that code was. I would be afraid. Who knew if it was something a little more serious-ish? serious, serious -ish. But uh, yeah, a good code reader lets you know what's going on with that check engine light, and uh, whether it's a minor or a big one. I guess if I was having like... Uh, a misfire first of all I think I would feel it but I'd, I'd be a little more hesitant to uh, drive home on it or at least have a good backup plan or if it was uh, temperature out of range or some some something like it maybe even like a, an evap reading that you know you know you could drive a little bit on that but uh, yeah good code reader I think is gonna go in my kit as well and uh, if you don't have a code reader, uh, one of those little Bluetooth dongles work great. Just something that you just know the condition of your computer or if your computer's trying to talk to you. And you know, it seemed like I talked on and on longer on the last one. <laughs> Someday I will find that episode and I will air it because I'm sure it was good, but I can't remember anything about it. I recorded it probably about two weeks ago and I just went today to edit it and realized I must have deleted it. Who, who knows? I couldn't find it anywhere. None of the regular folders, none of the trash cans. I said I even tried looking at my cloud backup and could not find it. It was probably the best episode ever, but we'll never know. All right, it's about all the time we have. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I do this. Well, I do it mostly to make myself famous. I want my 15 minutes of fame, but I do it so you can listen to it. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening to me. This is my therapy. All right, until next time, this is Nikki G saying, wheel what you got and be happy. And I mean it. Wheel what you got. Don't, don't wait for the upgrades. Don't wait for this. Don't wait for that. Just get your ass out in the seat and wheel it. You'll thank me later for it. <laughs>